بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الناس قد جاءتکم معیزتم من ربکم و شفاء لما فی الصدور و حدا و رحمت للمؤمنین قل بفضل اللہ و برحمتہ فبی ذالک فلیفرہ و خیر مما یجمعون بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ بعد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری وحل الاقتتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی صدق اللہ العظیم My respected brothers and my sisters Before I start my khutbah today I will request all of you that from depth of your heart, from the core of your heart, with all your emotions and feelings, say Alhamdulillah, thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you and me, we are alive today and we are blessed. 150,000 people did not wake up this morning. This was their last morning in this dunya. You and me are witnessing the suffering all around the world. That how people are suffering. That you and me are, we are blessed. That not only we are alive, but Allah has given us this tawfiq that we are witnessing Friday and we are present here in the masjid. And that should be Thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, the ayah of Surah Yunus, which I have read, the first, this ayah is so beloved to me that I really would like to reflect on this ayah first and then inshallah I will talk more about, you know, Ramadan. There are two introductions of Quran. Two titles of Quran, the most read book in the world is Quran. But unfortunately, the other side of the picture is very dark. The most misunderstood book is also Quran. Even by Muslims, who claim that this is their holy book even in our ranks we don't know what Quran is talking about what the message of Quran is the ayah I read in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Ya ayyuhan nasu qad jaaatkum mu'izatum min rabbikum wa shifa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'mineen Tell Ya Ayyuh Nas, the whole humanity, not just Muslims, tell everybody who lives in this world, all human beings, that the instruction, the guide, the manual has come from your God, which is a cure of all the diseases of your heart. And it's a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's a guidance for all humanity. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ And this is a fuzzle, this is a bounty, grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلْيَفْرَهُ And rejoice, be happy, celebrate because this is the most important thing you need in this dunya. هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ And this Qur'an is better than whatever you collect in this dunya. Whatever bounty you collect, whatever treasures you collect, the message, the hidayah in this Qur'an is better than whatever you can imagine and you can collect. My brothers and my sisters. You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Qur'an shifa, cure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Quran hidayah, guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Quran blessing, mercy. 
اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی اس قالی قرآن باؤنٹی فضل گریس آف اللہ سبحانہ وتعالی you know as a human being we if we go away from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهُ فَأَنسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ the ayah from surah hashar that if you will forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will make you forget yourself and you will be lost you know GPS can work only when GPS will know my current location if my current location is not there in GPS GPS will lose all the direction it will direct me right and left because it's a lost direction when we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala God the Almighty then Allah makes us to forget ourselves means we lose our focus we lose our destiny we lose our direction we lose the purpose of life the why God has sent me in this dunya why am I here what is my destiny and when you are like a lost person then you know what's happening in the world today we have gone away from the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in America 20% population is declared mentally sick they need mental treatment 20 percent one out of five need some doctor attention because of the mental sickness and you know as a doctor i can tell you the specialty which is most on demand right now is psychology and psychiatry because we as a human being we have lost our direction depression psychological diseases anxiety multi-billion dollar business how to deal with anxiety some people are trying to find relief in dancing some in meditating some in different types of means and tools but wallahi the only meditation which can work is going back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connecting ourselves to God Almighty that is the only way that we will get the peace because this is said by nobody but God himself that sukoon the sakina the peace is only in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers and my sisters that since we don't know what this Quran is talking about Quran is supposed to be manual of my life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has said in Quran that I have made this Quran easy for you because I have given you examples of the past nations what mistakes they have made in the past so you will not learn that the hard way Allah has provided us the information of the past nations so we will not repeat those mistakes my brothers and my sisters and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us the nur the guidance which way you should go what is right and what is wrong what is the meaning of success so this book actually is a manual is a GPS for me that how should I live my life because we are away from this book as a Muslim we have also lost the direction Muslim they are not immune whatever I am saying the situation of general population if you go and do the survey of Muslims in any country Muslim country or non-Muslim country you will see a strange phenomena you know I have seen misery and difficulty and hardship of failure what you will call the misery of success nobody is happy rich is unhappy poor is unhappy married is unhappy and unmarried is unhappy sick is unhappy and healthy is unhappy everybody you go and interview is unhappy because we have lost our direction my brothers and my sisters Quran teaches us the concept of Tawheed as a Muslim Tawheed means that you have belief in one God and you believe in that God as your sustainer 
as your cherisher, as your rub, that he takes care of all your needs. Everything comes from him. This concept of Tawheed, that my total reliance is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever comes towards me is with will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever doesn't come to me is with his permission and his knowledge. And my death time is written where and when I'm going to die. My risk is written. My taqdeer is written. My destiny is written. Whatever will come to me is written in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is Tawheed. Wallahi, if you and me, we have this clear picture of Tawheed, then nobody can give me risk. Nobody can humiliate me. Nobody can challenge my dignity. Nobody can harm me. Nobody can benefit me. Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that everybody in this world get together to harm you, they cannot. And if they want to benefit you, they cannot. So when I have Iman on Tawheed, I will do my part. I will go and knock the doors for job seeking. Yes, I will prepare my resume. I will distribute my resume. If I have any worldly need, I will go and knock the door of people. But I'm not going to rely on them. If they don't do what I want, I will not be upset with them. I will not be angry with them. I did my part. But whatever came to me is from the will and permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine what a sakina you and me we will have in our life. This misery is because I am every day worried about my risk. I am worried about people that they, are, they might hurt me. We go and put ourselves down. We humiliate ourselves in front of people because we feel that they are the giver. My risk is in their hand. If they will be angry with me, they are going to put me down. They will fire me. Wallahi, nobody can fire you. Nobody can hire you. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can benefit you. If you have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look what a freedom, what a freedom we can get. If we have just trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not saying that I will not do my part. I will do my part then my reliance will be on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that lesson is repeated again and again in this holy book, Quran. That Allah is your Rabb. Allah is your sustainer. Allah is your giver. Nothing comes without the permission and will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There might be things that I hate, but Allah has blessing for me in that. There might be things that I love and I want to have it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has curse for me in that. That's why Allah wants to keep that thing away from me. So my brothers and my sisters, the message of Ramadan is that we need to reconnect ourselves with this book. We need to go back. We are supposed to be the light provider to the whole of the humanity. We are supposed to be the role model for entire humanity because this is the only book. Quran is the only book that protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala letter by letter. If you and me see the journey of Quran, this Quran started journey writing on leaf, on bones, on skin, animal skins 1400 years ago. And the same Quran, letter by letter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected and we have this in our hand, letter by letter. No difference, my brothers and my sisters. This is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we should value and we should reconnect. I want to share with you one hadith. This hadith is narrated by Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu who was a Jewish scholar. When Prophet ﷺ migrated from Mecca to Medina, you know, everybody was excited to see him. Some people wanted to see him to 
give shahada to him to accept Islam. Some people they wanted to just to see him how he looks like. Abdullah ibn Salam was not Muslim at that time. Big scholar, top notch scholar of Jews of that time. He says that I went to see Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When I saw his face, the very first impression I received after seeing his face was, "This is not a face of a liar." And he says, Abdullah ibn Salam, the very first words I heard from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam were, "Feed the hungry." spread salam take care of your kin relationships and pray to allah subhanahu wa taala at night when everybody else asleep there are three commands of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which belongs to huquq al ibad how to take care of people around you human beings around you a new community in medina muslims are migrating they have to settle down in medina new town new city and as a muslim for you and me living in north america we have the message in this hadith a very big message prophet saying feed the hungry take care of the needy people around you people who are suffering people who are under privileged they are in need take care of them this will make their heart soft they will be able to listen to your message more clearly then prophet is saying spread salam salam means spread the word of peace the message of peace salam is not just saying assalam alaikum salam means when you say salam you are giving the message that this brother is totally protected from me he will not expect any harm any difficulty any harshness from me peace the message of peace spread the message of peace to the people around you and the third thing is the basic foundation of our muslim society take care of your kin relationship my brothers and my sisters sila rahmi take care of your relatives this is the time that we should reconnect to everybody who is angry with us for reason or for without reason even if my family member is angry with me for no reason i should be the first one to reach out and to reconnect my relationships my brothers the fourth thing prophet sallam says pray when everybody is sleeping wallahi this last thing is the real message of ramadan sincerity purity of intention that you pray you stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala when nobody is watching you right now when we come in masjid yes everybody knows that who is coming and who is not coming when i stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala and i sacrifice my sleep i let my nafs go that tells that i am sincere and i am standing in front of allah subhanahu wa taala you know for huquq al ibad for the people's right the bottom line the ruh the spirit is compassion that we should show compassion to people around us our family members fellow muslims fellow human beings we should show compassion compassion is the spirit of taking care of all the people around you compassion means that you will not follow cancel culture you will not reject people you will not push away people ya rather you will be welcoming no matter what their situation is if they are sinner or not wallahi you never know what is going to happen to people down the road because we basically take people just how they look to us right now and i'll just give you the example of bishr al hafi rahmatullah alay he was at one point he was muslim very rich man but alcoholic and he used to drink you cannot even imagine he used to do sins that you and me we cannot imagine 
you know we have this culture if anybody does any mistake or we feel like you know he is not dressed up properly or his beard is not correct or his topi is not correct or he cannot read you know quran rightly or he cannot pray rightly we reject them this cancel culture is very prevailing culture in our society and in our masajid we reject our youth wallahi you and me we don't know what they go through in their practical life what vulnerable their situation is from where they are coming we should be welcoming to our youth no matter what condition they are in if they are coming in masjid this is a place they can find refuge they can find peace and guidance this this man bishar al hafi one night he came drunk at home he opens his door and he sees a piece of quran paper quran aya on the floor he was drunk he picks up that piece of quran and goes inside home cleans that piece put some itar some perfume on that piece of quran and then puts it higher some place the respect he gave same night he sees a dream and in the dream allah subhanahu wa taala says to him that bishar you have put our word higher you have given respect to our word we are going to give you higher place in the community we are going to give you higher place in this dunya and akhira that was the day that bishar repents to allah subhanahu wa taala and he becomes such a scholar about whom it comes imam ahmad bin hanbal radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu when he used to visit him imam ahmad bin hanbal imam ahmad was not used to stand for everybody to welcome imam ahmad used to stand for bishar al hafi to welcome him that was his status Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal will walk with him all the way to say bye to him on his doorstep my brothers and my sisters so my point is that when we are dealing with people around us show compassion and when we are dealing with Allah subhanahu wa taala the spirit the ruh the basic ingredient of dealing with Allah subhanahu wa taala is love of Allah subhanahu wa taala I will tell you four things to do in the remaining days of Ramadan and try to make this practice wallahi if we try to practice this the love of Allah subhanahu wa taala will come in our hearts our sincerity will come in our deeds number 1 at home pray two long raka every day of nafil salah two long raka of nafil salah every day when i say long most of us like me we do not know much of quran even if we know short surahs repeat them repeat them but try to push yourself to stand in front of allah subhanahu wa taala do longer qiyam let's make this habit two long raka every day nafil at home wallahi and then try to make a habit if you can move those two ragat towards tahajjud time you know tahajjud time is the best time that you can communicate with allah subhanahu wa taala tatajafa junubuhum anil madaj yaduna rabbahum khawfan wa tamma wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun that this is the quality of these people they keep their back away from their beds تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون to two long raka every night and have this habit number 2 recitation of quran with loud voice every morning you know if you go and talk to your grandfather this was the culture of muslim home that the first sound you will hear will be the voice of quran somebody grandmother grandfather uncle father mother somebody is reading quran let's revive that tradition that we should read quran every morning even two ruku or three ruku whatever we can read number 3 my brother askar 
taught by dua and asghar taught by prophet muhammad sallallahu dua is a whole ibadah dua really is a zikr of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in dua i will just emphasize on one thing durood on prophet muhammad sallallahu durood is a dua which is already accepted durood actually is the best dua if you cannot ask any dua have this habit of reading durood as many times as you can and this is your dua because in durood if you look, go and look at the verse of durood you are sending this dua to prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ibrahim alaihi salam and hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that when you make dua for somebody else angels they make same dua for you and angels they say amin on that dua so what you are asking in durood actually you are asking for yourself as well and maulana maududi rahmatullah alaihi said that whenever you say ale muhammad ale muhammad includes the whole entire ummah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because in quran when quran says ale firaun when quran has used word ale ale doesn't mean his family ale means everybody who is his supporter who supports his system and society so when we say ale muhammad we all are included so in dua repetition of durood is very much recommended allah akbar